Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Our strategy is often made in the cool confines of the boardroom and expected to be executed in the tropical heat of something like Delhi uh, by the salespeople, or more pertinently, feet on the street, on, you know, in large and small Kirana stores, general stores, and supermarkets. You know, is that what we actually end up doing? with a clear ambition to become a much more data-driven organization and using analytics to transform the shape of our business. I, Pooja Chanda, and my co-author, Disha, we embarked on a journey. We had already identified growth opportunities for lever by leveraging focus geographies, by leveraging data using retail audit, household panel, and which all of us in CITES do very well. And it had actually reaped great returns for us as well. But we said, let's go one level deeper. Let's get into the gore. And that's where the idea of micro growth geographies was born. And what we really did was we tried to use a very, very unleveraged tool that all of us have in all our companies, which is internal data. Yeah? And what we did was we mined the data for 3,500 towns that we had available for us but nobody had really thought of mining that. And add to that, we added another arduous goal for ourselves. We said we will map it to the census data. You can just imagine the number of hours and conversations that we would have had trying to make sense of this. So the first thing I would say, and that's why we brought this to the fore over here, is that it, it is something which can be really leveraged by each and every company individuals and even market researchers sitting here. Uh, we, what we've been able to do is identify micro growth geography opportunities by portfolios and even going down to SKU level. Now that is no mean feat. And that is why this piece of work was one project where you know, the sales and marketing teams who are often at loggerheads with each other because one team has done the work and the other is uh, supposed to execute it. Here, there was perfect alignment in the boardroom because of the hardcore rigor that had gone inside it. And, but I really feel that the power of this piece of work is not just in us having aligned what are the strategic bets in the boardroom. The power was that what we gave to the feet on the street. Each of the people sitting in the 3,500 towns could use the Power BI app that we created and identify in their own ways what are their opportunities. How can they make small differences which can lead to a massive difference in sales? That was really, ladies and gentlemen, what we were able to do. We will walk you through the step-by-step -step process that we followed. Uh, Disha here is going to talk to you a lot about that in just a minute. And you will understand what does it take to do something of this nature. Yeah, over to you, Disha. Thank you, Pooja. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, so like Pooja mentioned, uh, we have curated this 10-step approach, which we followed to approach this project. Step one. So before we go to step one, uh, imagine the 3,500 towns which Pooja was talking about and you have to map the volume of these towns to the Nielsen or the Kantar HHP data. It's, it's a nightmare, and obviously it's not budget friendly for us. So we thought that we go deep down and we'll see that the most robust data which is available to us, which is our internal sales data at a channel level, we will try and we will map that data to all our 3,500 towns, which was our step one. It involved a mammoth task of cleaning that data and using it to do this analysis. Step two was to map all this volume stroke towns data to uh, the population, which we uh, derive from the census, which is census data, which is available online. So we went online, we pulled out all the data sources, and we uh, mapped everything, all the population data, to these different towns. Step three, the most critical one, was to calculate the per capita consumption. So once we have identified the cleanest possible internal sales data mapped to these 3,500 towns and the population, we calculated per capita consumption. Uh, and for that, we used, obviously, volume divided by 
our population. Now we got volume, we got population, we got per capita consumption, which we say PCC, but we did not want to stop at just Kellogg level. We said that, okay, we got that for these towns, we have the per capita consumption of Kellogg, which people are consuming, but let's not stop there. Let's go to portfolios. So we, we, we did two things. We went to all our portfolios, whether it's Conflex, Chocos, Muesli, we calculated per capita consumption of these towns across these portfolios. And we also calculated this at a 2x, 4x, and 6x level. So across our SKUs, we divide them into these uh, buckets. 2x is our uh, affordable packs, 4x is our core, and 6x is the premium portfolio. So each and every SKU at Kellogg, we divide into 2x, 4x, and 6x, and 2x plus 4x plus 6x make the entire Kellogg. So this is the data set which we created, uh, and after that, when we started analyzing, we realized that we need some benchmarks to compare and to say that, you know, these are the benchmarks against which uh, the, the town has to perform. So what are these benchmarks? So we, we thought we'll divide these 3,500 towns into various cohorts in which this benchmarking can be done. And these cohorts were made basis the population and the size of the business. So for the example, we have taken the metro cohort just to explain the methodology. So this is the metro cohort which had eight metros. Once we have the cohorts and the respective towns, we, cal we come and we, we come to the step four, which was actually identifying the opportunities. So if you look at the total, at a total level, we said that at a cohort level, what is the average volume, average per capita consumption, or average population which that cohort has. Once that cohort is sorted, the averages of the cohort, we said now we will benchmark each of our town falling into that cohort as per those averages. So for example, for Bangalore, at a total Kellogg level, that Bangalore index was 1.3x. This is the number which we got. That means what? That means that Bangalore people are consuming 1.3x of Kellogg versus the benchmark which we have put in place. So if you have to compare all the metros, Bangalore is eating us more. But when we went ahead and we said, when we saw that the data for 2x, 4x and 6x, we realized 2x is under leveraged. It's 0.6x. So what is happening in 2x that though Bangalore is doing so good, like it's at 1.3x, but 2x is falling. So we need to fix for that and that's how we started identifying the opportunities. So we had several cohorts, like multiple cohorts, multiple towns, and we uh, did this analysis and identified the opportunities in particular portfolio. So just remember Bangalore and 2x opportunity, here we are. Now step five for us was to calculate a rough opportunity size. Okay, opportunity exists, but is it worth investing upon? Is it, you know, big enough to, for us to act, take actions? And that's where we started calculating the opportunities. It was saying that at a Bangalore level, if we are at a 1.3 index, then at a 2x level also we have to uh, reach 1.3x. Otherwise, no point. So that's how uh, we did some calculations and we said that we will, in order to bring 2x from a 0.6x to a 1.3x, what is the kind of opportunity exists. For step six, we realized, again, we hit a roadblock. We realized that there are a lot of towns, specifically the very small ones, where even the population data is not robust. So we started churning a lot of uh, census reports and we realized multiplication, like uh, same town, multiple census population data. So we said, fine, we will not even rely on the population data and we will go ahead and start churning internal sales only for these uh, cohorts. So for cohort level, instead of population and business size, we stuck ourselves to only regional data. So the cohorts were main basis, the regions, uh, 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 for example, the state level to remove any regional bias and also as per the size of the business. And instead of the per capita consumption benchmarking, 
uh, we started looking at the internal sales data. So everything else same, it's just that we changed the cohort uh, definition and also moved from a per capita consumption to the uh, internal sales data. Step seven, so though this is one set of data, we have arrived at a lot of recommendations, but what other sources are telling me? What are Nielsen or uh, HHP data or our internal distribution media data? Are they also talking the same language where we are heading? So it was important to look at all these data sources and arrive at a one holistic solution. I'll talk about in our recommendations what all uh, we covered and how we arrived at the uh, recommendation. While going in the process, and it was a, a, a big project, so just INA cannot lead it, and we started involving all the other stakeholders as well in order to brainstorm and arrive at a, a, a common decision. So we have a small snippet from Sumit, who is our uh, marketing director. Uh, can you just Brilliant play? thing about the micro growth opportunity project uh, for me personally is that it works beautifully at 10,000 feet and at 10 feet. At one level, we could take 3,500 towns across the country and identify micro clusters of growth, maybe for assortment, maybe for stock depth, maybe for driving penetration. But then more importantly, actually convert it into very, very specific actions for the salesmen and the feet on street on the ground. And they had in, the, in their palm tops, very clear one, two, three actions that they drove out of this. But most important are results and uh, what I feel particularly elated by is not only did the input metrics improve on assortment, stock depth, etc, etc, which I said, but the ultimate result is penetration and our penetration for Kellogg's in these markets exploded differentially once we started doing this. So I wish the team all the best, some really, really good work done. All right, coming to step eight of our analysis. A uh, complex looking chart, but very simple to interpret. If you look at the Y axis, we have the total per capita consumption of Kellogg's. X axis has all the per capita consumption at a 2X, 4X and 6X. And this will be replicated for our portfolios as well. And all these small dots are our towns. So all the 3,500 towns at a cohort level. So if you look at this quadrant, which was our focus quadrant, what we interpret is that in, in this, our category development is high. That as a Kellogg company, we have really penetrated uh, in the region and we are selling high. We don't have to do category development job here. So people are consuming us, but at a certain SKU or at a certain portfolio or at a certain 2X, 4X or 6X part of the portfolios, we are lacking behind. And that's how we started identifying and putting this chart together to really come across the uh, focus geographies, stroke towns. Now, this much of analysis and data crunching, we all sitting in the room can understand. But if you have to go to the sales team or uh, even the leadership, they will not have the patience or the expertise to churn or to understand this data. So we created this simple Power BI tool for them. It had all the analysis and all the recommendation in place. So as a salesperson, I just have to click to my town. I have to see that at a portfolio level, where am I standing? And I have to decide that, okay, maybe conflicts is no, not doing well in my region. I need to start building uh, something for conflicts. And it gets refreshed quarterly. So after a quarter or six months, when I put in all my actions in place, I can come back and see that how I've performed. So this is available across the organization. Anybody at any level can go to this Power BI dashboard and look at the data, how we are performing and where are the opportunities which are existing. And step 10 is to socialize the opportunities. There are a lot of projects which we do which are just limited to the boardroom. They never pass on. We uh, sit in a corner and we do our jobs. Maybe we recommend and we move on. But in this project, we made sure that we socialize, we pass on it to every single person in our company. Uh, we have a short video from Sahil, who is at RCMM South, uh, explaining that how he used this data. The micro growth opportunities project 
helped the sales team in unlocking the power of data, thereby working upon the 2x opportunity, especially in Karnataka. It helped us tremendously in expanding our 2x portfolio, especially the Chocos, and it helped us in generating the incremental sales. Now we'll cover a couple of recommendations which we had put in place. Uh, we have picked uh, a short uh, summary of six key recommendations which we had uh, put in place for the project. Number one was on the 2x portfolio. Bangalore we have been discussing uh, throughout. So what we had seen when we started analyzing other sources of data which I talked to you about, all the Nielsen, HHP, internal sale, internal distribution, media, we realized that Bangalore reach is not up to the mark. So while at an average of eight metros, 2x covers 77% of total Kellogg's distribution. Bangalore is sitting at 72%, not, not good. We are selling 1.3x of Kellogg uh, uh, sales average, but at a 2x level, we are not going to the right uh, stores, uh, number of stores. So that was the first recommendation that we need to bring it back to 77%, 72% will not do. And we also sat with the sales team to identify the regions where we can go and we can pull up our distribution. So another in the 2x, while Bangalore was one of the examples, uh, which is obviously a metro, there was very small towns of north and south, including uh, some of the towns in Kerala like Thrissur and Thalaseri where we realized that uh, the kind of weighted distribution these towns have, it's not up to the mark. So overall, we saw Kerala that the reach is fine. We are eating to the right number of stores, but the quality of distribution is not there. So if you look at the data, while at total Kellogg's, we have a 42% weighted distribution. At a 2x level, it's just six. And if we compare it with the all India averages, it's quite low. So the next part on the other these small towns is that they'll please reach to the right stores instead of gaining more stores in our kitty. So that was the another recommendation which we had. Coming to the 6x portfolio, uh, we realized that West Bengal is quite under indexed on 6x. 6x is our premium muesli granola portfolio. And we saw other regions like um, Havra, Parganas, Purba, Mednipur, Siliguri specifically, these are small towns there. Uh, we have a lot of potential. These, these towns are not spoken about, but they are doing in terms of um, pulling up the Kellogg sales, but in 6x portfolio, not doing well. Now, what can we do? Again, we went on the journey, uh, started analyzing other sources of data, what kind of recommendations we have for that. Number one, and it was quite an eye-opening for us, that we don't have the assortment in place. So while like other towns, uh, they're not leading with just one variant of muesli stroke ganona. They have a variety in place, what we have in Kellogg. But in West Bengal, this variety doesn't exist. People are going just selling one piece, which is the lead variant. And that brought us to think that why this is happening. And we need to really push the assortment. Another was on the increasing media weights. So, uh, uh, what we saw that at a six metro level, the kind of reach we are doing, because we were planning at six metros, West Bengal is quite under index, which we did not notice in the first place. And hence the recommendation was to push media reach in West Bengal. And obviously with the variety and media inputs going in, we said that we really need to uh, drive throughput per store in these geographies. And one of the examples for Forex, which we have put, uh, is on the UP. If you look at the regions, Agra, Allahabad, Kanpur, Meerut, and Varanasi, we saw that there's a high value play. So people like, uh, con sorry, players like Mohan, they are putting a 100 rupee pack and they're giving a lot of grammage in that pack. So people are buying into value instead of going by the brand Kellogg. So how we fought them, we already have a value pack in our offering for conflicts, which is our 99 rupee pack for 290 grams. We said that we'll front foot this particular region with, with 290 grams pack. And this is how we have started playing across UP, across these small regions. And there's a massive share gain which we have achieved in this year just by playing through this pack. So this was one of the 
uh, uh, best recommendations. And even in these small towns, we are seeing that 290 gram cornflakes is really picking up like a hot cake. Next, we'll talk uh, on the impact of business. Uh, Pooja will take over. I hope everybody really understood the process, but I'll just recap it uh, by first showing you the impact on business. Uh, and if you look at just, uh, yeah, see these numbers speak for themselves. Actually, when you put this kind of chart, I don't think I need to say anything because look at the kind of increase in penetration we've got in like 40 lakh plus towns, a 77% increase versus last year. Look at down the pop strata, less than 1 lakh towns growing by over 100%. And these are the kind of numbers we've never seen before. You know, our penetration numbers would always be like inching and now they are leapfrogging. So really what we did, I think, was something which is so powerful because it started at a very massive scale, right? It started with 3,500 town data. It started with census. It meant creating cohorts. It meant going deep down and identifying where are we under leveraged, not just by one part of the portfolio, by every part of the portfolio. And the kind of engagement that, for example, Disha talked about, it wasn't that, you know, we are doing this work in silos. We co-opted the representatives from the marketing team and the sales team so that we create something which is so powerful, which can be implemented. And what we really did was, we said, okay, let us give the agency in the hands of the sales people also, because it is not a top-down approach, because otherwise it's like, okay, this is a target which has been given to me. Here, every person, every feet on the street has the Power BI app, and they can actually look for opportunities based on hardcore, rigorous data. And that is really uh, what we feel was the magic in our project because it was a combination of sales and marketing uh, coming together. It was a combination of strategic thinking and tactical execution coming together, which led us to the kind of growth that we've seen. Thank you.